okay so today we are going to start uh, start mood and figure of a uh, uh, syllogism of a categorical syllogism yesterday we discussed four type of statement four type of uh, premise or conclusion in a categorical syllogism so let's have a quick revision of that first one is a give one example of this a type statement Uh, all men are brave all men are brave very good this is universal affirmative universal positive next e this is universal negative so no men are brave no men are brave okay then i i is uh, the particular positive so some men are brave some men are brave and o oh, some men are not brave some men are not brave so these all are uh, four type of statement in a in a categorical syllogism yesterday we were discussing that every s is p this is universal uh, affirmative no s is p this is a type statement as you told this is universal negative some s is not p we have done a small mistake here we have to write it here and this i should be here so i is particular positive positive things are written in this side and negative things are written this side universal things are written this side and particular things are written this side so this is a, a classical uh, square of opposition these all terms we will also discuss well what these all terms mean okay so everyone is everyone have a clear understanding of this a type statement e type statement o type statement and i type statement is there any problem in this no sir it's clear okay and please remember this figure also this should be at its specific position as i just uh, draw it incorrectly but it should be uh, in its original position a should be here e should be here o should be here and i should be here okay okay now let's discuss mood of a categorical proposition or mood of a categorical argument what is mood so before telling mood of a categorical argument we have to uh, know certain terms one is major term minor term middle term again please be ready with a pen or paper you will not find a very clear explanation in notes and you cannot find very clear explanation of mood and figure in any book you just have to write in your own language so we will go step by step and you can write this just a minute
ओके सो व्हाट इज मेजर टर्म व्हाट इज माइनर टर्म व्हाट इज मिडिल टर्म सो लेट्स टेक अ एग्जांपल ऑफ ओरिजिनल कैटेगोरिकल सिलोगिज्म ओरिजिनल कैटेगोरिकल सिलोगिज्म एज आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू इट शुड हैव थ्री स्टेटमेंट फर्स्ट टू आर प्रीमाइसिस नेक्स्ट वन इज your conclusion so a dog is a an animal a cat is a dog so a cat is a animal so apart from three statements are there these two are premises and this one is conclusion so first write down what is minor term and what is major term how to find minor term and how to find major term just directly go to conclusion this is conclusion of statement so if you will directly go to conclusion the subject term in conclusion will be the minor term and the predicate term in conclusion will be major term again i am repeating just go to conclusion of a categorical syllogism and in subject of conclusion there will be minor term and in predicate there will be major term now let's take some more example okay in this no physical action or chances occurrence all chances occurrences are random events no random events are physical action so let's directly go to conclusion third statement is always conclusion so conclusion we have these random events as subject so this is minor term and in conclusion if we go to predicate then this is major term is this clear yes sir yes sir okay now what is middle term now if you observe this one term will be missing in minor term and major uh, sorry one term will be missing in conclusion because every statement has only two terms in conclusion one term is minor term one term is major major term so the remaining term there will be always three term in categorical three terms there should be always three terms in a categorical syllogism and uh, the remaining term for example dog is remaining the remaining term which is not present in conclusion but will be present in both the premises for example dog is not present in conclusion but will be present in both the premises this will be known as middle term so major term predicate of conclusion minor term subject of conclusion middle term missing term in conclusion that is present in both the premises okay now again go to example okay now in this which is minor term sir uh in the second question sir all events are things described by signs that that question ha uh, yes this this question second one 
So the top two, the all events are things describable by signs. Mm -hmm. That is premise one. All mental decisions are events. Premise two, and mental all mental decisions are things describable by signs is the conclusion. And in that you are asking for the major term, right? Ah, uh, major term, minor term, and middle term. So major term, by the definition, is the predicate in the conclusion. So the yes. predicate in the conclusion is all mental decisions are things describable by signs. Describable by signs. Ah, uh, things describable. Describable by signs. That is the predicate. Major term. Ah, uh, yes. Minor term is mental decisions. Yes. And middle term. Middle events. term is events. Yes. Very good. So minor term, major term, and middle term. Is this clear to everyone? If anyone is having doubt, please ask. Because next we will move to how to uh, find mood on the basis of this minor term, middle term, mood, and figures. Both are depend on this middle term, major term, and uh, minor term. So is anyone having any doubt? No, sir. Okay, there can be need of practice, but there should be no doubt. Like with practice, you will find more and uh, you will find uh, easiness in this more and more. But there should not be any doubt. Okay, now let's move forward. What is use of this middle term, minor term, and major term? Okay, so if you carefully observe this. If you will carefully observe the syllogism, then your minor term is pres is also present in one of premise with a middle term, and your major term will also be present in one of the premise with middle term. Middle term is present in both the premises, but except middle term. One premise will contain minor term and one premise will contain major term. For example, this premise one, it is containing a middle term as usual. As I already told you, every premise will always have a middle term, and middle term is absent in conclusion. So this premise is containing a middle term, and except middle term, this is containing. Animal means major term also. Animal is major term here, na? So it is containing major term also. Now look at this premise two. It is also having a middle term, but apart from middle term, it is also having a minor term because cat is our minor term. M I. I I will just write M I. Okay, so is this clear? One premise will okay. One premise will contain major term and one premise will contain minor term apart from the middle term. So the premise which contain the minor term will be the minor premise. the premise which contain minor term will be our minor premise major premise which contain our middle term sorry major term will be our major premise okay what will be middle premise the middle premise uh, because the middle term is contained in both the premises hmm so the middle premise must be both the premises okay okay actually middle premise doesn't exist but 
you are you are uh, cancelling it it looks like the middle term is cancelled when we are coming to the conclusion actually middle term middle premise uh, does not exist and it's good that you are attentive in class because many classes what happen when i ask about which is middle premise many students just answer about the conclusion statement that this uh, this is middle premise actually we have only two premise now minor premise and major premise next we have only conclusion okay very good next you have to decide which is minor premise which is major premise again i am repeating first you have to uh, you have to judge which is major term minor term you have to decide first term first step second step you have to decide premise which is major premise which is minor premise and that's it now you have to decide which statement is every uh, which statement is our every uh, which type of statement is minor premise major premise and conclusion so for example which type of statement is this a dog is an animal a e i or o a is universal this is a type statement so which premise is that this is major premise so major premise is your major premise is a type statement now minor premise again you have to write premise wise minor premise means this premise it's which type statement it is also a type sir yeah it is also a type so it is also a type and conclusion conclusion which type of premise is your conclusion this universal a a type okay very good so this is also a type statement so this is step 3 you have you decided premises now you decided which type of statement is major minor and conclusion this is step 3 now step 4 just arrange first you have to write major premise so major premise is a just write a then you have to write minor premise minor premise is also a conclusion you have to write this is also a so mood of this uh categorical syllogism is a a a so how to write what will be the what will be the order don't confuse in this first there will be major premise then minor premise and then conclusion so you can expect one question at least or can be one or two question from this mood and figure okay so this is how you calculate mood of a let's take one more example i will solve it then one question i will give you just a minute some cat are animals some mammals are animals therefore some mammals are not cats okay 
सम कैट्स आर एनिमल्स सम मैमल्स आर एनिमल्स सम मैमल्स आर नॉट कैट इज इज दिस क्लियर टू एवरी वन हैंड राइटिंग इज क्लियर ओके नाउ हाउ टू कैलकुलेट मूड नाउ फर्स्ट ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट विच इज माइनर टर्म सो विच इज माइनर टर्म sir uh, in the conclusion we have mammals. to find the mi minor term which is mammal uh mammals is your minor term. cats M are major term yeah major term is cat means predicate of your conclusion middle term animals animals mammals animals so no, animals sir yeah animals Animal will be because it is present in both the premises and absent in conclusion. Okay, on the basis of this minor premise, let it be P one, P two. So, which will be minor premise, P one or P two? Some mammals are animals. P two. P two will be minor premise. And. Uh, then automatically other will be major premise okay yes why we are telling this minor premise because it is containing minor term mammals is present in p2 so it is minor premise and animal uh, sorry mammals which is our sorry cat which is our major term it is present in p1 so it is our major premise okay now which type of statement is this i sir i said sir I. particular positive ha huh. and which type of statement is this tail sai sai and this one o oh, sir it is o oh. o oh. so first we will write our major premise result so major premise is your p1 so we will first write p1 i then we will write minor premise it is p2 so by chance the both question we solve in both question p2 is minor premise and p1 is minor uh, p1 is major premise so that we are writing in order but sometime it can be happen that major premise is p2 so then you have to write p2 first okay so major premise p1 means i minor premise p2 means i and then your conclusion o so mood of this argument is i i o okay one more question you can solve on your own no fish are mammals some dogs are not fish some dogs are mammals okay solve this question and what will be the mood of this categorical syllogism sir it's e o a e o a
E O I. According to you, O E I. Okay. I was thinking I will not have to solve this, but now I should do. Okay. So dogs are your minor term. Minor term. Mammals are your major term. Mammals are your major term. Then directly from here you can go to major premise. So major premise is this. So which type of statement is this? This is E type statement. Mm. Sir, I got it as I O E. I O E. Now we have uh, more moves of a categorical syllogism than a human. Sir, it is E O I, sir. E O I. E O I. Yes. Yeah, it will be E O I, I think. Because mammals is your major term now. So from major term, you will directly go to major premise. This is your major premise. So first you have to write down about major premise. It is E type statement. Then you have to write down about minor premise. It is your minor premise. Some dogs are not fish. It is O type statement. And some dogs are mammals. It is I type statement. So it will be E O I. Yes, sir. Okay. Everyone is clear with this? Yes, sir. Okay. Just practice. I will give some questions. Just practice and you will do it. And you will not uh, then find any difficulties in all this. Okay, now one more question, at least answer of everyone should be same ones. All horses are animal. Some dog are not horses. Some dogs are not animal. Okay. Now solve this and A O O. A O O. A O O. Yeah, A O O, sir. Okay. A O O. Okay. Okay. Very good. Now everyone is clear with this. Now, what will be the figure? Now we will move towards figure of a categorical. Syllogism. Yesterday I was talking about some PDF. Okay, this PDF. Okay, now look at this. This PDF and this image makes very easy how to remember figure of a syllogism. So right now we are giving importance to minor term and major term. And uh, we are only uh, discussing the mood of categorical syllogism on the basis of minor term and major term. 
because we are first writing major premises, then minor premises, then conclusion. Now, if you want to decide the figure of a syllogism, then you have to find out middle term. So as I told you, middle term will be present in both the premises. If this is your, uh, OK. OK, this is your P1. These all are your P1 and these all are your P2. P1 and P2. It is not like one is minor premise, one is major premise. These all are your P1 and P2 as uh, you can see in this uh, PDF. Okay. Now how you will decide the figure of a categorical syllogism. If your middle term is present in subject of P1, this is subject of P1 and predicate of P2, then it will be called as figure 1. If your middle term is present in uh, predicate of this uh, P1 and predicate of this P2 also, then it will be figure 2. In figure 3, it will be present in subject of both the premises. Don't uh, look at this. This is uh, like uh, this is uh, denoting the uh, major term and minor term. Major term, sometimes we denote major terms with P and denote minor term with S. So it is denoting major term and minor term. And in figure 4, your middle term in first premise, it will be present in your uh, predicate and in premise 2, it will be present in your subject. So just look at this. In figure 1, it is having a cross situation. In figure 2, it is having a straight situation in your uh, predicate. In figure 3, it is also having a straight situation, but it, in your subject and in figure 4, it is having a diagonal situation, but in P1, it is in predicate and in P2, it is in subject. Okay, just give me one minute, I will explain this. One example I am taking all 
ए आर बी ऑल सी आर ए एंड ऑल डी आर सी सो हाउ वी विल टॉक अबाउट हाउ वी विल डिसाइड द फिगर ऑफ द सिलोबिज्म इट इज अ लिटिल कंफ्यूजिंग बट इफ वंस यू विल गेट दिस देन इट विल बी वेरी इजी ओके हाउ टू डिसाइड फिगर ऑफ द सिलोगिज्म ओके so just what you have to do you first you have to uh, go through these premises p1 and p2 okay just a minute Uh, am i audible yes sir okay okay sorry okay these are your uh, two premises and this is your conclusion so just what you have to do you just have to go to middle term in this your middle term is uh, all all arb all c r a okay one mistake i have done here this is a uh, this should be a b c a and let this be a all a r c okay so in this your middle term is a uh, b b is your middle term now this is correct so you just have to look at middle term and you just have to look at these two premises first premise your middle term is in predicate and other premise your middle term is in subject so it is making a figure like this like a diagonal figure it is making so from this just go to this chart and you will find this figure in figure 4 okay. so this is having fourth figure and uh, that's how with the help of middle term you can decide which type of figure any uh, which type of figure any 
categorical syllogism is having. Now we will just take one or two more example to decide this mood and figure. Okay. Okay, now what will be the figure in this? No fish are mammals, some dogs are fish. So just find out middle term. Middle term is mem uh, middle term. Fish. Dogs and mammals are your minor and major term. So figure one, I think, sir. Yes, yeah, figure fish one, are your uh, middle term. So it will be like this type of diagonal it is forming. So it will be your figure one. Okay. So this is how you can uh, find out. So if it is coming like this, then it is figure one. If it is coming like this, then it is figure two. If it is coming like this, then it is figure three. And if it's, it is coming like this, then it is figure four. That's why to simplify this, we make this diagram. This is figure one. This is figure two, both in subject. Middle term will be in both subject. This is figure three. Middle term will be in both predicate. And this is figure four. So with the help of this diagram, you can easily understand minor term and uh middle term and with the help of you should know uh sorry you should know middle term with the help of a uh, major term and minor term then on the basis of middle term you can easily decide figure with the help of this diagram okay is anyone having any doubt in all this no sir okay so I will give some question, then I'm sure you, you will have some doubt because uh, small, small things are there. First, you have to arrange in this major, minor, then you have to decide uh, which figure is this. I will give some question, try to solve those questions today. And in, in evening, we will decide those questions. OK, now we will uh, move towards next topic, Squire of opposition so square of opposition Okay, this is square of opposition. Okay, one more thing I forgot to mention. In this figure, there is no use of minor term and major term. But there is use of major premise and minor premise. Right now, we are doing just, uh, I am uh, just telling uh, so that explanation will be easy. But uh, before telling the figure, you have to arrange the premise. Like first, you have to write major premise then you have to write minor premise then you have to tell the figure okay i'm again uh, mentioning please don't confuse this premise with term premise are different terms are different that's why i'm telling this at the end of figure you decided figure purely on the basis of middle term but 
before telling the figure before telling the position of middle term just first write the major premise then write the minor premise there can be case like p1 it can be your minor premise and p2 can be your major premise then just first write p2 and then write p1 just we are doing in a uh, deciding mode is this clear sir does this command do square of opposition no no uh, i am uh, explaining figure most important point in deciding figure you have to arrange these premises okay so it's a continuation to the uh, figure topic sir ha uh, figure topic i'm uh, telling this in last so that you will not confuse this minor and major premises with minor and major term so we should uh, uh, like order it in a way where the major premise is coming first and, and the minor, minor premise is coming next second ha huh. then only you can tell the figure based on that figure so we have to first order it and then draw a line for the middle term ha ah, yes first you have to order it then draw order line premises yeah just we are doing in uh, we are doing in a uh, mood na first we are writing major premise yeah then minor and then conclusion minor ha ah, then minor then conclusion so this will be same in figure also you just have to find figure in this order also and please again please don't confuse this major premise with major term or minor premise with minor term those are very different there is no role of major or minor term in defining figure you just have to check middle term based on the, the position of middle term in major premise and minor premise is this clear yes sir yes sir okay so this is our square of a position so we have only 6 minutes left so in this we will try to remember the position of each and every uh, statement and relation between them so in this class try to remember the relation between them in next class we will try to find out what this relation means okay so this is universal positive and this is a uh, universal negative so universal positive and universal negative these are known as contraries the relationship between them is contraries what is contrary relation this we will uh, discuss in next class particular positive and particular negative these are having relation sub contraries and in a uh, vertical direction same relation is there between universal positive or particular positive this is known as sub alterns and same relation is between universal negative and particular negative it is also known as sub alterns and in diagonal the relation is contradictories so there can be question like every s is p and no s is p what will be the relation in these two statement in the Sir, repeat that, sir. Uh, every S is P, and no S is P. So, what is the relation between these two statements? Contraries. Contraries. With the help of this figure, you can easily remember. Like A and E, the relation is contraries. I 
and O, the relation is subcontrary. If a statement is in I form with same subject, same predicate, if you are writing the O type statement, then it will be subcontrary. If a statement is A type and the other statement is I type, the relation between subalterns, same is for E and O, the relation is subalterns. And when we are talking about diagonal statement, like for example, no S is P, this is one statement, or some S is P, this is I type statement, and these both are situated in diagonal position. So when we are talking about diagonal uh, points, it will be contradictory relationship. So don't confuse in this, just go through that figure in next class, when we discuss in detail, like what a contrary relation means, how you can uh, solve question on the basis of this contrary relation, how you can solve question on the basis of this subalterns relation, how you can solve question on the basis of contradictory relation, then you will remind these all relation very easily. For now, again, just take an example of uh, we will draw it ourselves so that it will be then easy. Okay. First, all A, R, B. Which type of statement is this? A type. A type statement. Okay. No. A or B, which type of statement is this? E type. E. This is E type statement. Okay, next. Some A or B, this is I. I, I type statement. And some A or not B, this is O type. O statement. Okay. So the relation between these two statements, all A, R, B and no A, R, B, the relation between these two statements will be known as contrary relationship. Between A and E, the relation is called contrary relation. Between I and O, what relation we call it? Subcontrary. Sub Subcontrary. Yes. Subcontrary. And between A and I, this is subaltern. Subalterns. And this is also subalterns. Sub yes. And in diagonal, it will always be contradiction. Yeah, contradictory. So this is all about square of a position. So now what we have to do, we just have to identify what is the uh, meaning of various type relationship and how we can solve question basis on this. So I will give some question, try to find mood and figure and uh, try to revise everything we studied till now. Okay, if you are having any doubt, you can ask. Yes, ma'am. No, uh, I said we'll revise. Ah, uh, yes, ma'am.